Thanks for joining me today. If this is your first time watching my YouTube channel, my channel is all about helping you as a photographer become a better photographer, learn how to take better photos, whether they're wildlife photos, whether they're landscape photos, or whether you want to learn how to edit your images in Adobe Lightroom Classic or in Nikon NX Studio, which is a free editing program provided by Nikon to edit your Nikon RAW files or your JPEG files. I want to show you how easy it is to start your journey in Adobe Lightroom Classic because it's just like learning to ride a bike. When you learn to ride a bike, you have training wheels on because you don't know how to balance, you don't know how to ride, so you need those training wheels on. This video is just like that. It's going to show you how to start your journey in editing your RAW files in Adobe Lightroom Classic. So you can see we're in the library module here. We have to go to the develop module. You can see I've only got one pane open, which is the basic module. If I close the pane down, see we have basic, color mixer, detail, lens correction, and transform. There are many more, but I have removed the ones that I don't use. When you first open up Adobe Lightroom, you will see there's quite a lot of them. If I open the basic module, you can see that all the rest of the modules here are closed in because I am using solo mode. To show you what that is, all I have to do is just use my mouse and right click on any of these panes and you can see solo mode. If I click on show all, once I've clicked show all, there are many panes, but I don't want this. I just want solo mode. And the reason solo mode is so good is that if I'm in basic, it just shows me the basic module. If I go down here to lens correction, it just shows me lens correction. You don't have to scroll so far down to find what you want. Adobe Lightroom does not look at the camera you own. You could own a Nikon Z30, you could own a Nikon Z9. It just looks saying, this is the lens that you're using. I have a profile for this lens. It's all enabled now. This is the first thing that you want to do when you get into Adobe Lightroom because this really helps you. If I unclick enable profile corrections, can you see how it's changed a bit? We have a bit of vignetting in the corners and there's a bit of barrel distortion. When I click on it, the vignetting's gone. This is why you need to start here. Let's go into the basic module. Up the top here, we have several buttons. The only one I'm gonna show you here is the crop tool. Then we have auto. This is to give you a head start to edit the image. When you click auto, it gives Adobe full control over your photo. And this is a great way to help you start editing your images. Because when you start, you really don't know what all the sliders are for. So Adobe shows you saying, well, this is how I think this image would look like correctly edited. Let's click on auto. Look at that. It's already done a very good job, but I can see the sky is still quite flat and the image just needs a little bit of spruiking up. We can see here the profile shows camera standard. That's the profile that this photo was taken in. I don't want camera standard. And here you can set the mood for the image. So we have camera standard, we have Adobe color, Adobe landscape, Adobe neutral, and then Adobe portrait. We'll go to Adobe color. That looks very good. Then we have our white balance. Well, we'll leave the white balance alone. I want to get the exposure right, the shadows and all that rest before I touch the white balance. If we look up the top here, we have a histogram. This tells you whether your photo is underexposed or correctly exposed. If this graph is towards the left, the image is underexposed. If it's towards the right, it is getting correctly exposed. And if it touches the right hand side, it's overexposed. So we don't want to be touching the right hand side. It's very close, but we'll open it up a little bit more. We've adjusted the exposure, contrast. Contrast allows us just to add a little bit of definition to our images. It's going to give a separation between the bright areas and the dark areas. So it's really going to highlight the difference. You don't want to go overboard in contrast. If I slide all the way to the right here, it's really contrasty. The whites are very white, the dark areas are very dark. So we'll bring it back to about here. Now the next ones here, we have highlight, shadows, whites, and blacks. Highlights are your bright areas. Shadows 
are your dark areas. Remember that a photo should not look like a painting. So you have to keep this in mind when you're editing. If you increase your shadows all the way to the right and you decrease your highlights all the way to the left, you're going to end up with a very flat image because there's not going to be that difference between the bright areas and the dark areas in your image. Very quick way of seeing where the slider should be for our highlights and for our shadows and our whites and our blacks is our keyboard. There is a quick shortcut and that is the Alt key. On a Mac, it is the Command key. So I press the Alt key and on the highlights, we have a black screen now. We don't want to see any whites. If I slide the slider to the right, you see we're getting whites. There's color there. We don't want that. So we're gonna bring the slider down until there's nothing there and we let it go. I can see that the sky, there's still no real definition in there. I'm gonna keep bringing the slider to the left. Now I can see more definition in the sky. Let's do the shadows now. Press the Alt key. Now the shadows, we have to have white. We can't see any colors. Keep sliding the slider to the right. If I go to the left and see we've got color there, I don't want that. I want to see just a pure white screen. Now we'll do the same for the whites. And if I go all the way to the right, we've blown the whites. The image is overexposed, so we just bring it down. But again, it's just a little bit too white. The white's a bit too strong. We slide down. The blacks here will do the same thing. We'll take it all the way to the left and I can see there's color there, so I'll just bring it back. A very quick way to remember this is you've got to think about the opposite. If you're adjusting your blacks, the screen has to be white. If you're adjusting your whites, the screen has to be black. Now that my image is quite close, before I adjust the vibrance and saturation, let's choose our white balance because our image is correctly exposed now. Here we can see the temperature and the tint. We can choose has shot, auto. Now this is letting Adobe choose. It's just way too warm. We can choose daylight, still not right. So I'll go back to has shot. We can use the eyedropper here. And when we use the eyedropper, we have to choose a neutral gray area on our image. So let's look for one. I'll click the eyedropper here. If you look in the top left-hand corner here, as I move the slider around, can you see that the colors change? Because it depends on where I've got the slider. If I come all the way to the bottom here, in the foreground of the beach, it's showing me it's about a neutral gray. So I click on it. This looks very good. Now let's adjust the vibrance and saturation. We all know what saturation means. It means we're increasing the colors. We're saturating our image. But do you know what vibrance means? Because these two work together. Saturation, we are saturating every color. But vibrance, we are only putting saturation in our primary colors. Red, green, blue, they're the colors that we are saturating. We're adding more punch to those colors. Your vibrance should always be more than your saturation. If you increase your vibrance, let's say to a, on a slide to 30, I would only increase the saturation to 20. You don't want them the same because if you have them the same, that means that you're really doubling the amount of saturation for your primary colors. We see here vibrance is at 30. We'll take it to 30 and 32. Now we'll increase the saturation to about 20. That looks very nice. Now I just want to check using the crop tool whether my horizon is level because it's hard to see here. So we'll go up to the crop tool and I'll grab the bottom corners here and you can see there's two little arrows. If I swing those arrows, you can see it's moving around. And now what I'm looking at is the building in the center of the image here. They look very well lined up. I can click on the crop overlay tool or just hit the enter button. It looks really nice. Now the last part here is adjusting the texture, the clarity, and the dehaze. Texture, we're just defining the image a bit more. Clarity, we're adding just slightly more punch, but it's also going to increase the saturation of our image. So clarity is a double-edged sword. You have to be very careful using clarity. The last one here is dehaze. And dehaze means exactly that. You're removing the haze from an image. A quick tip here in that if you are photographing on a foggy morning and you want to add to that foggy atmosphere, you want to add to that softness, then dehaze is your best friend. But 
if you're on a scene like this you can see in this beach photo here there's a lot of salt spray there's a lot of wind around I want to remove some of that salt spray some of that haze to make it more clear we'll go along and we'll add a bit of texture we'll add a bit of clarity and now the dehaze I want to take the haze away so I'm just going to move it to the right here look at that I've removed quite a lot of that haze this is like picture postcard image let's see now before and after we go down to the bottom here just above the thumbnails we have RA then we have YY here YY is a before and after so we click YY so this is what we started off on the left here it's very bland and look on the right here we come back to a single image look at this image here can you see that we've got a lot of sky and the foreground here the beach there's just nothing there don't think that you always have to keep into a six by four frame once you've learned how to edit you're the master of yourself every photographer is unique we all edit we all take photos differently I go out with a mate of mine quite often and we might take nearly the same scene but we will edit that scene very differently because we are very different people let's go to the crop tool here and I really want to crop this into a panoramic form there now I just hit enter and look at the difference here I've reduced quite a lot of the nothingness in the foreground and a bit of the sky and it looks so much different than a 6x4 and you can see that we have a more defined image we're highlighting these four surfaces more and it didn't take me that long now these are my images but I'm sure you have images that you can practice on now remember when you first start editing your photo in Adobe Lightroom before you do any editing use the lens correction tool then click on auto and then just start working your way down just like I did this shows you the difference between the original raw file on top and the edited raw file down the bottom they are so different now our edited raw file is ready to be exported out of Adobe Lightroom and shared on social media or to your friends and family you can see it's not that difficult you just need to take your time be patient and just learn what each slide is about this is what's good with the auto mode because you look at the auto mode say well why did it bring the highlights all the way down in this one and in this one it didn't touch the highlights too much look at the photo they might be very different one the highlights might be blown out the other one the highlights might be quite dark so Lightroom has gauged it well one needed more highlights reduction the other one needed less highlight reduction this video has been of help to you give it a thumbs up thanks for watching enjoy photography whether you're taking photos or editing photos and I will see you next time